uh, FS, FSH. Uh, so once again, now we're coming down to our testosterone total. So my testosterone total is. What's up guys, Derek, moreplace18.com. Today we are going to be reacting to um, Teron Beckham's uh, blood test results. So he actually sent this to me on, uh, he was trying to reach me on Monday and this was before he put out his video and a bunch of people in the comment section, you know, were telling him to reach out to me and, you know, uh, get me to do my analysis and blah, 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 you know, in order to help him prove what he's trying to prove here. So I just opened this for the first time, the blood test results uh, that he emailed me. And uh, let's see, I will also be reacting to his video for the first time. So I will let him go point by point and I'll kind of interject uh, as appropriate. What's up ladies and gentlemen, it's your boy Aftermath back with another video for you guys. Uh, today we have finally got my second test results that I've been wanting to give to you guys. Now I know the last test results was honestly something to get up for you guys just to show that I can, I can pass a test. I mean, pretty much so that's what you guys said. Um, I can note that this is just showing that you can pass a test. So therefore I went um, to get something a lot more detailed done uh, for you guys to further prove my, um, pretty much my battle in, with, with everybody and testosterone and whatnot. Now, between the time, uh, which was 11, 16, uh, 2020 to the second test which was taken 12 um 12 30 2020 um you know I've, I've benched 500 i've squatted deadlift you know you can see my instagram see the videos that i put up um you can see my lift numbers that have been through this time frame and even still now tomorrow if you want me to bench 500 or today whatever comment below i'll, I'll do it regardless um but these are my okay so let me just go check out his uh the original video I did on reacting to his blood test results. Um, let's see what the date was of this again. So he had it up on the screen and it was, let's see, this was the, uh, this was done November 16th, 2020. And then the most recent blood test was done on december 30th 2020 okay so like a month and a half afterwards and he did a bunch of you know max outs and stuff in between these so if i recall correctly in the original one the problem was the anabolic screening parameters there was a t to e ratio that you could otherwise basically scam and get you know go completely undetected using even like generous trt if i recall there was no gonadotropins there was no a lot of things that you otherwise would basically let you skate through this on exogenous T pretty easily, as well as, you know, not counting all the GH, IGF-1, insulin, all the other shit you could do on top of that. So I think that was my overall consensus on this, uh, on this one, because I remember it was like missing a lot of stuff. So um, I guess moving forward to the most recent one, it looks like he got more markers, biomarkers done, which is good. Um, let me, uh, he's actually got his uh, T levels, his SHPG, his DHEA, PSA. Um, does he have his gonadotropins on here? Okay, yeah, so he has gonadotropins on here too. Okay, so let me hear his commentary on this. My uh, test of what you guys wanted to see, which is my free test and my testosterone results. So I have the sheet here, let's get into it. When I was a little boy, I wanted to be a hero. Truth is, um, video that I put up for you guys. So let's go straight down. Cholesterol, usually people on um, supplements have high cholesterol. Uh, mine are in the normal range of 135 to 200 with uh, 145 HDL cholesterol with 54. Okay, so yeah, typically taking exogenous anabolics can skew your lipid profile pretty significantly. Let me have follow along with him. We'll go to that section. Is that right at the top? No, where is it? There it is. Um, okay, so yeah, the 145. HDL of 54, you know, if I saw like a 80 plus or something, I'd be a lot more inclined to be like, okay, this is like a lot harder to attain when you use exogenous anything. However, 
It doesn't take that long to recover your HDL after discontinuation of exogenous anabolics too. I think I did a video not too long ago about how even using like a fucking shit ton of d -ball, it would take like, I think it was like a few weeks for it to come back to baseline. I don't remember exactly what it was, but that was like a liver toxic, like oral steroid, literally. Um, not, you know, just standard testosterone, which is not going to crush your HDL as much. So, you know, I wouldn't really take anything from this as a huge indicator. Um, it's good to see a CRP is below one. <laughs> just look at general health markers at this point. Um, LDL 73, I believe, uh, plaque buildup is known to start over, uh, is it 70 or 80? I forgot what it is, but, um, obviously pending, uh, other lifestyle choices that go along with that in terms of, uh, inflammation and whatnot. Um, maybe, maybe I'm just wasting time <laughs> reacting to the health component. Anyway, let's get back to it. Uh, and that should be greater than 40. So it says 2.7 is HDL risk ratio of cholesterol. I think that that's below, it's usually like average is 40 to 60. So it's a below average, which I, I believe is still good. Um, LDL below 100, 73. Triglycerides below 150. Uh, going down to the nitty gritty. What is that? 5.7. Oh, I believe HGBA1C is for like, uh, yeah, the diabetes. So I, you know, pretty much saying that I have a possible, I'm, I'm kind of entering that risk of entering the risk of entering the risk of getting like diabetes or like uh, starting that process. So I honestly need to chill out. Yeah. So a 5.7 hemoglobin A1C is kind of interesting given his body composition, lifestyle, just, you know, genetic superiority in general. Like, I guess, like realistically, it's not that hard to induce certain uh, biomarker aberrations through uh, just like th shitty diet practices, shitty sleep. But um, like, I wouldn't expect that from him. This is like, like, it's not like the worst thing in the world, but I mean, I would definitely keep an eye on that. Keep an eye on your uh, fasting glucose levels, your fasting insulin. See what your glucose control is like postprandial. You know, keep an eye on that shit, obviously. <laughs> um, not really super relevant to uh, the topic of discussion, though. So I will go back. Like, when do you go back to his original? Was his hemoglobin A1C in the original? It's turning into like a health over <laughs> assessment rather than a natty or not thing. Um, anyway, I don't think it was in there, but... um. Anyways, definitely keep an eye on definitely keep an eye on that. On uh, my sugars, I just had a pack of Oreos. <laughs> I need some more vitamin D. That's what this says right here. Actually, no, it says below below thirty to one hundred or through. Yeah, so he has uh, let's see, twenty eight point three nanograms per milliliter of vitamin D, which is deficient. So especially in. Uh, with all the stuff going on and the implications of vitamin D may or may not have on your tolerance to the you know what thing that's going around the world right now, it would be uh, highly advised that you you know take a vitamin D supplement, which I'm sure he's probably probably doing now. But most people are underdoing the vitamin D big time. Uh, most people just aren't taking it to begin with, and being african-american it also impairs his ability to actually you know endogenously produce it so you know taking it through supplemental means supplemental means is obviously uh warranted especially with the current uh you know parameters in uh the social distancing locking down staying in your house not going anywhere it's kind of hard to get your vitamin d when you can't fucking do anything obviously <laughs> so taking the supplement would uh definitely help many different health processes. Vitamin D is like uh, one of the most commonly neglected areas of health. 30 to 100. Greater than 30 to 100. Oh, okay. Oh, well, dang. I have no vitamin D. Baby, uh, we got to start taking vitamin D. I think you got that problem too. I think vitamin D, I have been. You have been? Yeah. Ah. Uh, FS, FSH. Uh, so. Okay, whoa. You just skipped over like the most important thing, dude. Hang on. You have been? Yeah. Ah. Uh, FS, FSH. Uh, so, once again, now we're coming down to our... Okay, I'll touch on that because I don't think he's going to. So, 
One of the main criticisms of the last one, if I recall correctly, was the lack of showing his gonadotropin. So this would be your follicle stimulating hormone and your luteinizing hormone. And if you were somebody who was unnatural, these would most likely be in the toilet. And the only way they wouldn't be is if you were literally exogenously administering, like you'd have to go to pretty great lengths to keep these elevated while you're on exogenous fill in the blank. So you could either, you may use something like clomiphene while you're currently on whatever the fuck it is that you're on you may and again if you had like a proper like full spectrum wada screening you would also have been checked for clomiphene so let me see uh if that was in the thing no we have clenbuterol we have clostebol we have col colosterone i don't even know what that is fuck so i don't see clomiphene anywhere on here which is a fertility drug you could otherwise you to use to prevent that negative feedback to your HP, to your hypothalamus, which would then you know kick up your GnRH to your pituitary and then keep your gonadotropins being you know pumped out even while you are on you know SARMs or whatever the fuck it is that isn't being tested for in the first test. But again, there's so much time in between them, it's kind of hard to say for certain. None of this was done because it's like, first of all, we're missing all of the things we would need up here in the first one. And then the second test was so far after, it's not like there really isn't a huge opportunity to, you know, fuck around. Like, do I think he knows, you know, how to go about doing this? Probably not. But I mean, like, it is possible that it was done. And, you know, I guess some people are master manipulators and will pretend they don't know anything when they know a lot of stuff. And, like, how many Olympic athletes have been busted? And, you know, we're clearly, like, denying use for years and years and years. And then all of a sudden, you know, Justin Gatlin pops for a fucking TDE ratio exceeding, you know, whatever. There are a lot of situations with guys who just claim, you know, until the day they get popped that they've been clean, they've been clean, they've been clean. And then, you know, just so happens, you know, Lance Armstrong has been using a fuck ton of shit this entire time. <laughs> so I'm not saying that's the case either. I'm just saying like, this is really hard to prove anything when you don't have a simultaneous test because like the way you would show that you're not being suppressed simultaneously like you could hypothetically manipulate the test like i said to use a serm while you're on whatever it is you're using or you could even use recombinant um fsh and lh to literally like manually spike those levels right before your blood test but that's like the most extreme of manipulation that i highly doubt most people would do so if you use like hypothetically a fertility drug concurrently with your anabolic of choice if you're even on anabolics you could potentially you know keep your lh and fsh in range maybe while you're on the cycle but then you would also to at least rule that out you would have to get your test done to make sure you have no clomiphene in your system no clomiphene metabolites etc so this you know it's favorable having an in-range fsh and lh it's not uh it's pretty low to be honest it's not very high so it doesn't you know it's natural, but it's not like a super favorable level. So a lot of people would speculate, oh, it's like low end of normal. So you just came off whatever you were using and maintained the mo like all of your strength until the performance enhancing benefits kind of like taper off. Cause it's not like if you stop something for a few weeks before a contest or before an event or whatever the fuck it is, you're not gonna just like fall off and lose it all. Like Olympic athletes don't cruise into the event on a bunch of shit they will have it cleared out of their system in time and remain in a state where they're going to be, their performance is going to be above baseline, but they're going to ensure they don't, they don't get popped by whatever drug testing is going on. They would rather take the, you know, five to 10% loss in performance from being totally clean at the time of, you know, an event or something than to, you know, be cranked out of their tree at hundred percent and have an impossible time to pass a test. So, at least most of the time, you know, there's different exceptions to the rule depending on what you're using, how uh, ballsy you are, how uh, confident you are, um, and depending on the compound, like I said, because if you're literally not being even tested for whatever it is you're using, like fucking have at her, you know, blast it into the sky. So, but with this, the FSH and the LH, they're, they're certainly not high, which you would think for like a genetic elite, he would have like topped out, you know, fertility metrics. Um, but again, his vitamin D is low. Like there's different things that can have interplay here. And uh, you certainly can't say he's shut down right now. So again, though, he could easily be on Clomid or whatever the fuck right now. Like we don't know that for sure. We don't know. We don't know based on this test. Like it doesn't look like there's any screening for compounds. It looks like it's just biomarkers here. Like there's no, uh, there's no urine analysis here. There's nothing. So I can't 
I can't say for certain that he's not using a CIRM right now, you know, to maintain this level while he cleared out whatever he was using. And, you know, the estradiol is in range, prolactin, uh, let's see, testosterone total, 518 nanograms per deciliter and a total of 18.8 with a 37.7 SHBG. So SHBG, you know, often you would see it low for individuals on exogenous hormones, but again, this climbs up after you get off what you're using. And especially if you're on certain drugs for fertility, like it's very, very conducive to getting your, getting your SHBG back up as quickly as possible. Again, do I think he's thinking that far ahead? Probably not, but I mean, and that's not to like talk poorly of him. I just like no one, how many people would think of that? Like fucking no one, you know? So, you know, I, I can assert that his endogenous hormone production is natural-ish based on this test. I can't say for certain that he wasn't using something prior to this, cleared it out, did some sort of PCT regimen, or even just cleared it out in general. Like the FSH and LH certainly aren't ideal, you know, by any means. Doesn't bold well in his favor that these are not higher. But doesn't mean he's unnatural, you know? So testosterone level is not too high for a genetic freak. Again, though, you're, you're going to see guys who vary in, you know, athletic performance and muscle size and stuff. It's not going to be just linear that you have, you know, all the jack guys you know that are natural are all 900 nanogram per deciliter fiends. You know, there's going to be guys that have, you know, a 500 that are more jacked than a guy who has an 800. Like that, that happens all the time. So I wouldn't use that as an indicator either of, oh, like he couldn't possibly have this physique on 518. Therefore, he's unnatural. Like I can get, okay, I could get why that argument would be said for sure, actually. But I mean, like it definitely occurs where individuals can be more genetically elite and certain, certain things in the body aren't all facilitated directly by your total, if that makes more sense. But anyways, you know, looking at the rest of it, there's nothing really else in here that I can cut, touch on. So I'm going to let him uh, talk now and then see if there's anything more I have to add. Testosterone total. So my testosterone total is 500. 80% of people are going to fall kind of right here. <laughs> the fuck? It just pops in that Vitruvian physique just out of nowhere. In the middle. This would actually be 500 nanograms per deciliter. Essentially, these are kind of like, you know, the regular people, kind of, you know, the muggles. And I am doing what I've been doing with this amount of testosterone. So keep in mind, your testosterone level can vary significantly throughout the day though. It is not like it's a stable bleed throughout the day. It is secreted in a pulsatile fashion in a, and it follows a diurnal rhythm. It's not like you just have, like you could have like an 800 earlier in the day and then it, you know, turns into a 500 later in the day. It's not like it's just going to be representative of like this is a snapshot in time so like what time did he get this test done what did he do before the test did he have a shitty night of sleep before did he do something the night before what is this 11 45 a.m so like i don't know what time he woke up i don't know if he was fasted i don't know if he went right to the place i don't know if he has a early is your morning like 6 a.m and then you went at 11 45 did you lift before like what happened you know so it, th this 513, it's not like this means with 100% certainty that he doesn't have higher levels at other points of the day, you know what I mean? Or they just have lower, you know, it could potentially be lower too, this might be. Um, but the likelihood is that, like again, this is a snapshot in time. If he got another testosterone test at another time, it could be significantly different. Like, you know, difference of 100 plus nanograms per deciliter. Like that's how different it could be pretty easily too. That's quite common. My test of my free testosterone is 18.88. Now for, it says 5, 518, you want your testosterone to be between 240 to 950. Um, at 518, I feel great. 950 is like a really not generous top end either like that is that is like the shitty end of the stick as far as um giving leniency to genetic like hyper elites and testosterone production like you some labs will go as high as like 1100 you know having a 950 on the top end and a 240 on the low it's like that's some like that's a shitty range in my opinion my sex drive is, is always been the same i've always been a horny mofo um it's so often that goes overlooked is the fact that sex drive is driven significantly through your estradiol as well. And he seems to have a pretty good aromatization into estradiol. Like this is honestly higher than I would typically expect for an individual who produces 518 nanograms per deciliter and is as lean as he is. Like typically you're going to see individuals produce more estrogen, the more fatter they are. He's not very fat. 
you know, he also is not producing a ridiculous amount of tests. But again, the uh, kind of like lifetime of the hormones, how long they stay in your system, the snapshot in time of what's in your serum during the blood draw. This is all varying like all over the fucking place. So it's not like this. Basically, at the end of the day, nothing can be drawn from this. I'm just saying estradiol is a heavy, heavy driver of uh, libido. My strength, as you can see, has always been there. My physical body, I don't feel like I look the greatest, you know, but I'm comfortable, you know, I kind of still can kind of eat whatever and still be fit, you know, but I'm pretty sure if I could just get my diet together and stuff, then of course I would look a lot better, but I'm kind of living freely right now, loving training, just loving life. That's how I like to live. I love life. And um, that's, you know, this is what I do. So 518 is honestly like a very good number to have, especially for a natural. I know guys that are, that have, uh, that was watching videos they have a higher number than me and you know they look a lot better i don't know the correlation between a high testosterone and looking better so much um being in between the 240 and the 950 range because i've seen guys with higher testosterone that look better but they're you know not as strong as me uh, so i don't know um yeah so like again too how much muscle you have or how big you are doesn't necessarily dictate that you're going to be stronger than another guy. Like a lot of it comes down to literal like neurological efficiency, like your motor unit recruitment, how good you are at fucking connecting to shit and literally just snapping stuff off the ground or in the air or whatever the fuck it is that you're doing. Like there's a reason why some of the best power lifters in the world don't really look nearly as, you know, jacked as uh, the next, you know, bodybuilder dude who couldn't even touch the weight that they do. You know, a lot of it has to do with your brain and how it works with your actual entire physical system. So for this guy, you know, it's not unreasonable to say whatsoever. You know, there's a lot of guys that aren't as big as, are bigger than me and have better test levels, but are not as strong, blah, blah, blah. Like that's a common thing. And I saw a video uh, about the SHBG, um, which says that I have 37.7 and um the average is between 10 to 57 that's that's a normal range so all the numbers that i'm giving you guys are literally almost dead center besides my free test you know my testosterone total 518 that's dead center so keep in mind a total t in the middle but low gonadotropin sort of indicates that either well i kind of detail what i what it already means in this video that 27 minutes so i don't want to go too far but um, anyway, uh, sex hormone binding globulin 37.7. That's dead, pretty much dead center of the ranges that I'm given. Now I've been here trying to prove myself to you guys for, I mean, this past couple of months. Um, I, I didn't ask for it. Whoever was coming at me, I didn't ask for it. Didn't ask me put on the spot, you know, but I think it's time to really give my props. Okay, because I've been doing this. I know there's going to be a whole bunch of you still not believing it or saying, how is he so strong at 500? I don't believe it, blah, blah, blah. Probably making something up to disbelief, but I am telling you, these are my results. You see it right here, right now. I'm coming chill, you know what I'm saying? Because I'm just, I'm tired. I'm tired of just, you know, going through this. And I just kind of want to put that out there is that you can't tell somebody to that, oh, if I was... If I was, you know, like that, or people were telling me I'm on steroids, I would take it as a compliment. No disrespect, but they not, you know what I'm saying? So you really don't know that feeling if you haven't been through that. And the people that do do it, fine, cool. If you take it as a compliment, that's awesome, you know, and, but you can't expect me not to react to it or get mad at it. You know, I've been battling this battle for a long time. And the, the fact that I'm finally, you know, putting myself out there. I think we actually need to make the uh, Yatta. <laughs> I think that might actually be a idea that comes to fruition in 2021, pending travel restrictions are not so ridiculous. You want all this, you know, like. If you don't know what that, if you don't know what that is, by the way, just check out the uh, Mike Thurston response to steroid allegations video and I'll put it out, or accusations. I'll put it in the, in the corner here. I talked about that one in the uh, last video I did on Toronto too, I think. I said, you know, go to there if you want to see my elaborate description on what you would need to, you know, pass and not pass, but like prove that you're natural, like at that exact moment with the most conclusive amount of evidence, like the most 
the most you could possibly prove to somebody, that would be it. And that would be uh, totally sufficient, in my opinion. The only problem is it would have to be random and it would have to be uh, include everything. It's not just a matter of getting your biomarkers at a snapshot in time and then skipping over the metabolites of certain synthetic compounds and then getting the synthetic compounds tested another time without the proper biomarkers to accompany them at that snapshot in time. So I, I want my honor. You know, I've been battling the, the, the pressure of keeping it natural, staying natural amongst all these guys that are on gear, doing a lot better than me. And, you know, I'm constantly trying to stay humble about it and constantly just, just be myself, you know, be true to myself in this whole, in, in all of it. And it's just a frustrating thing, especially when people are just constantly telling you you're lying or, you know, I don't believe you, like stop lying. All you gotta do is tell us the truth to Ron and it's, 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 it's okay, there's nothing wrong with taking steroids and, nothing, and it's like, there's nothing to lie about. You know what I'm saying? There's nothing to lie about. And that's what's the most frustrating thing about this whole just bullshit. So I am very curious to see what you guys um, are going to say about this, Greg, or more plates, more dates, or the black dude that be on Greg's ass all the time, whatever his video, his best friend, whatever the hell he is, I would like to see you guys, what you got to say about my stats, my report, um, of my, pretty much my blood test work, uh, because, you know, I, I don't, I don't like being made fun of like that when it comes to just saying that how, how the the whole how to be how to know you're a fake natty type stuff you don't you don't know you don't know you don't okay you have to keep in mind too like you have to give them the benefit of the doubt that's going out of the way to try and prove it most people would just like ignore and not give a fuck and they would just brush it off because they either are a fake natural and don't want to bring attention to themselves or they just yeah if they were actually natural you know they just take it as a compliment i guess but uh like it depends but for him he's like actually fucking trying and he's spending money to try too which is notable like these aren't cheap lab tests you know like you could if you get a full spectrum panel like this might have cost him a few hundred bucks the first one probably you know a few hundred bucks at least too this isn't cheap and getting the full spectrum thing that i would recommend is not cheap at all either it's cheaper than i thought it would be to be honest when i actually dug into the pricing but um it's not cheap especially if you want to do it on a routine basis if you're going to prove it yourself without getting randomly tested you'd have to do it like several times like within like barely weeks of each other you know so but that would be how you do it uh, let's see if he says anything else and i commend him for trying to you know prove it you know this is not something anyone does like who nobody comes out and tries this hard to prove they're natural so honestly no okay because i'm obviously proving myself right now and there's no way to prove he's unnatural either keep in mind like this is just speculation based on body composition metrics strength numbers relative to world records you know stuff like that that gives us like it's more likely than not based on like common sense certain things that it would be far less likely for him to be natural than it is for him to not be but there's no conclusive like one way or the other so you know he's certainly trying to sway it in the you know way that is uh proving that he is indeed natural and i like i said give him props for that so let's hear what you guys say i will leave um if you guys that are making the videos about me if you plan to make a video please comment below or your your email or whatever i will send you my report um to your email uh, personally so you have the full report and i know a more place more dates in one of the videos i was scheming through it a little too fast so that way you actually have your um own forms for you to go through but um i mean that's all i pretty much have to say for this uh because i know a lot of once again a lot of you had an issue in saying that i was a joke because i wasn't showing my free test in um total testosterone or shbg um so here is everything for you guys nothing else for me to say um i hope you know i could hopefully lay this to rest honestly this is kind of cool to see it's something that I would honestly do like every two weeks or something just to see like you know how my uh levels maybe bounce around or something you know or with with certain foods or better cleaning up my diet better training yeah like for him suddenly i would recommend health wise off the bat get a few thousand i use of vitamin d in you asap at least per day um hemoglobin a1c if you really wanted to optimize you could get like a dexcom and like monitor your glucose continuously or at least get like a just get like a cheap one from the pharmacy and you know, it's kind of annoying, but I mean like, if you really wanted to see like what kind of carbohydrates in your diet, what kind of food groups really 
intolerable from your body from a glucose control perspective you would you know you could do that to optimize and uh like obviously something's fucking up with his h1 hemoglobin a1c being at 5.7 i would definitely keep an eye on that especially given his uh body composition and everything but yeah like the test like and two like he could potentially improve his strength numbers even more if he like optimized for his uh testosterone levels like his lh and fsh if he's actually natural like his endocrine parameters are like not great you know so this is if this is him performing at like subpar like imagine if everything was on point you know but um yeah anyway as far as like my general overview like it's good that the fsh and lh is shown along with the total testosterone again if you really wanted to like manually manipulate this you could use serms so then it would also be warranted to like what you would ideally want in general is a what wada like kind of like a broad spectrum wada panel where they have all of the banned substances in the anabolic agents category that would be the main thing you'd want this would include all synthetic anabolic steroids even if there is a testosterone to epitestosterone ratio you would be able to beat it by and like when i say beat it i mean like prove that you're not actually using exogenous t and staying within those parameters by showing your total free testosterone and your shbg would obviously be a it's not like a determining factor it's just a way to sort of further deduce what's going on but above and beyond that you would show simultaneously your fsh and lh levels because if you were on exogenous trt these could be you know in the toilet then again how would you manipulate that if you were trying to skirt around it you might use serms concurrently if that was going to work or recombinant fsh and lh which most people don't have access to so it's very unlikely you would do that and again the wada panel that's broad spectrum also has fertility drugs on it you would have clomiphene and clomiphene it's metabolites tamoxifen all this shit would be on there so it would detect if you were indeed trying to cheat the gonadotropin test and being on trt simultaneously or being on some sort of exogenous something else that's not like again like all these sarms are also on the wada panel like for pretty much every like re reputable league like if we're talking about like powerlifting usapl they're going to test you for sarms testosterone steroids all that shit okay so i'm bringing up the wada anabolic agents so you can actually see what i'm talking about visually so we're in the S1 section. You can see here anabolic androgenic steroids. So we're gonna have pretty much everything you could possibly think of unless you were to get a chemist to revive a Frankenstein steroid that was trashed by the government during research decades ago, which is highly unlikely. Other anabolics, you know, clenbuterol, SARMs, Tibolone, a bunch of shit that you otherwise would be able to get away with that is not derived from testosterone. But again, this is tested for. So getting like a standard WADA anabolic agents panel would be obviously helpful. Testing for growth hormone. Honestly, it's kind of impossible to prove that you're not using growth hormone. But again, is your strength going to be dictated by if you're using GH or not? Like, no, probably not. So I wouldn't even like read into that too much, to be honest. I wouldn't worry about it overall. Like if anything, I would stack an I. I would probably tack an IGF-1 blood test to the next, you know, lab panel because at least... That would be a lot more problematic to get around if you were indeed using exogenous GH somehow. You know, that's what would probably be elevated. That would be something that could be useful to add on. Again, that still wouldn't prove that you're not using GH, but at the end of the day, the likelihood you're abusing it is low if your IGF-1 is not like significantly elevated. So did I say that right? It would be your, your likelihood of using it is, it's fucking late right now. My brain's like half working. If your IGF-1 is low, it's very, very likely that you are not using a significant dose of it you could stay within the therapeutic reference range with a relatively low dose but again you know a couple i use the gh is not going to be what gets you to a 500 pound bench it's going to be heavy duty anabolics and other shit so let's see beta 2 agonists not too relevant hormone and metabolic modulators so here we have aromatase inhibitors this section you would also get tested for so this would be aromatase inhibitors we have things that can provide or block negative feedback to the hbta and artificially elevate your gonadotropin levels so this would be aromasin this would be arimidex you would have letrozole shit like that which uh this though this is the main thing that is notable so serums this is what i was talking about earlier so we have uh including but not limited to clomiphene raloxifene tamoxifen tormaphene these are commonly used serms in post-cycle therapy in order to kickstart your system and kind of get your gonadotropin spiked back up. So hypothetically, if you were trying to cheat 
a drug test and let's just say they, you could literally be using SARMs plus a fucking SERM and keep in range therapeutic natural production despite being on an exogenous synthetic drug. So like these are the kind of things to keep note of when you are being tested or when you're testing yourself, I guess, is that everything needs to be tested for concurrently or else you can get away with like one or the other thing. So you'll get the full spectrum WADA anabolic agents panel done. Like it wouldn't be the most relevant thing, but I would also get the peptide hormones, growth factors, related substances and memetics test. Um, are you going to really get any of this? Is any of this shit going to be the deciding factor if you perform the way you're going to perform? No, but I mean like it would be nice to show that you don't have tryptorellin in your system, LH mimics, you know, shit like that. That would be good. You know, GHRPs and whatnot. Again, they're not going to drive your bench to 500 pounds, but Obviously this would rule out a lot of different things too. Yeah, because this is otherwise stuff that could be used to kick up your HPTA pretty dramatically. Um, so yeah, I would actually probably test for S2 as well. I totally forgot about tryptorelin, gonadorelin, stuff like that. So that would be good to get as well. S4, I would also test for, which is uh, all of these serms and aromatase inhibitors that could otherwise be used to basically trick people into thinking that you are naturally pumping out hormones when you're not. Well, you would be, but technically, but I mean, <laughs> inducing it like yourself with a synthetic modulation tactic, essentially. And then above and beyond this, you would have your blood test, which would show all the shit you just got, which is great. To be honest, the only super relevant things on here, though, are your ba -ba -ba, FSH levels, your LH levels, your total T, your free T. Um, ideally, these would be tested using liquid chromatography with tandem mass spectrometry, but at the end of the day, this is probably fine too. It's just not hyper accurate, but it would still be, it would still, even if you picked up a compound that wasn't distinguished as testosterone and was like a false positive for testosterone, it would just, you know, that would get picked up in the water panel. So I wouldn't be too worried about that. You can probably actually just get the default now that I'm thinking about it. Um, so this, like you just got it, SHBG, Honestly, it's not like a, it's a red flag if it's low, but this isn't what I would use to like dictate if somebody's natural or not. Like you could have insulin resistance and have a low SHBG as a natural. That's like, you know, not a uncommon thing to see. Um, so yeah, anyways, that would be uh, the main things if uh, off the top of my head, you know, there's not a whole lot more you could really do, you know, like even if you beat the T to E ratio, like we're, we would see it within your, your gonadotropins would be crushed. Your test levels would probably be like, you know, a lot higher than they are right now. But even that, like you could just stay within reference range. But even if you were doing that, your LH and FSH would not be in range. And then even if you tried to trick it and use a SERM or some sort of um, HPTA modulator, we would pick that up in the WADA panel where we have all of these synthetic agents here. And a lot of those SERMs have really long detection times that you would really not be able to get away with for, you know, like you would not be able to concurrently get away with it. You know what I mean? So it's just a matter of testing for the right shit at the right time, pretty much. So that would be what I would do. And then obviously we could get into the talk of, you know, like carbon isotope ratio testing and shit like that. But realistically, at the end of the day, even if you were using synthetic testosterone, I would just look at your gonadotropins and if they were in range, and then I would go look at your WADA screening and see if any of these SERMs or HPTA modulators were detected. And some of those, maybe you could leverage them in some acute way that would be able to get around it, but it would be very difficult once you get that deep into it. Um, and that would be the base thing I would do. Obviously, ideally, we would also get carbon isotope ratio testing for the testosterone in your body. But I think if the gonadotropins are in range and there's nothing else being detected in here, it would be pretty hard to prove otherwise. Again, at the deepest level, you could hypothetically be using like cholesterol derived testosterone concurrently with recombinant FSH and LH literally injected into yourself before the test at a therapeutic amount and not get picked up probably by any of this shit. Um, but uh, yeah, that's uh, that's like as far as it would go and that would be like heavy duty manipulation. Like I don't think, I don't think anybody would go that far nor do I think most people have access to it. So anyways, that would be what to do. This video is getting very long. I'm gonna cut it off here, but hopefully that made some sense. It's more about ruling out the likelihood of synthetic compounds being in your system concurrently with the biomarkers being where they should be. It's not about like getting one done at one time and then one done a month later, because that doesn't really prove anything. Like, to be honest, the blood test result doesn't really prove anything alongside the blood, the, you know, urine test from fucking last month, as well as the biomarkers from last month. 
So, you know, that's pretty much it, dude. You know, so um, take from that what you will. Thank you guys for watching. Like, subscribe, check out my blog, moreplaysmoredates.com. Follow me on Instagram at moreplays underscore more dates, Facebook, Snapchat, Bitchy, Twitter, TikTok, Apple Podcasts. If you want to support the channel, you can check out anything I am associated with in the video description below. Uh, my TRT clinic, Gorilla Mind, Nootropic formulas, Gorilla Mode, pre workout formulas I designed myself from scratch. Uh, my recommended lab test panels through my TRT clinic. I don't offer the, this like broad spectrum service through my TRT clinic, by the way, because we don't have patients coming in who are looking to get uh, past drug testing. <laughs> but anyways, thought that was uh, worth noting because we were just talking about labs and I mentioned my lab test panels. So anyways, anything else I'm associated with, video description below. Thank you guys for watching. Talk to you soon.